So we can't speak about Lebanese community, but Lebanese communities. And this reminds me of uh, the late uh, Fuad Ajami, you know. Uh, he was a Shiite from South Lebanon. He was a Lebanese. He was also a, um, well, American, but how to define it? I mean, uh, say conservative or Republican nowadays, well, mm -hmm. in, in the good old days of George Bush, which were not so good, <laughs> but still, as compared to, and, well, yes, relative. When being asked uh, how would he define himself, you know, Shiite, Lebanon, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm at the same time, Lebanese, American, conservative, uh, Sometimes I'm Shiite, I feel myself Shiite, sometimes I feel myself Lebanese, sometimes I feel myself American. It's all, it's all there and it depends, you know. So that's what will happen probably to those Lebanese living in uh, uh, South uh, America. Now from South America we'll move back to uh, Europe. Uh, Nowadays, when we speak about Europe, what we have in mind are, you know, the Syrians who are already there and yet to come, but till lately these were the Turks who invaded, right, uh, Europe. Uh, at first, you know, by military power, now, you know, as workers. And this question will be addressed by Hai Eitan Cohen uh, Jan Alchuk, he is uh, the Turkey analyst in, uh, the Jeru of the Jerusalem Institute of, for Strategic Studies and uh, uh, work also at the Moshe Dayan Center for Middle Eastern and African Studies at Tel Aviv University. He received his PhD from Tel Aviv uh, University and uh, also well known uh, to those of you who follow the Israeli media or read the Israeli newspapers, is the area of expertise are contemporary Turkish politics, Turkish foreign policy, Turkish national security policy. It's actually Erdogan, Erdogan, and once again <laughs> Erdogan. And uh, he will uh, speak today about the Muslim community in uh, Germany. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, welcome to Israel for those who came here for the first time. Today I would like to discuss with you the Turks in Germany between uh, integration and assimilation. Uh, the important thing is in Germany today there are approximately 4 million Turkish, uh, German citizens of Turkish origin. And approximately 850,000 of them have the right of suffrage. But first of all, let's discuss how these people came to Germany and what is their status today and uh, what, what is the evolution of the, of the Turk uh, in Germany. Of course, when we are speaking about the Turkish existence in Germany, we should first of all remember why they were brought to Germany because of the Second World War. We all know that um, the Germans wanted uh, to conduct a reconstruction of their country. Uh, here you may be familiar with this scene uh, of the uh, the, of, the, uh, of the church in the uh, famous Kurfürstendam uh, street in Germany. And uh, immediately after the, after the war, we began to see that the, the Turkish uh, workers began to be recruited through intermediaries, through subcontractors, and uh, with personal invitation letters, they began to be brought to Germany. And these, uh, these uh, workers were highly uh, skilled uh, laborers and uh, workers and they were brought to many different city uh, cities in uh, in Germany and in the 1950s the German government made a very strategic decision and they began to recruit workers from many other countries like Spain Italy uh, Greece but uh, with the um, uh, with the destruction of the Berlin Wall uh, their uh, basically a uh, need 
uh, sorry, with, with the establishment, with the construction of the Berlin Wall, uh, they <coughs> began to uh, recruit more and more workers. And as a result, in 1961, for the first time, they began to uh, bring workers uh, from Turkey and they basically signed bilateral ag agreements uh, with Turkey. According to that uh, time, these workers could only stay in Germany for two years. And uh, because of the pressure of the uh, German businessmen, uh, these skilled workers could stay for longer durations uh, in Germany. And uh, in 1960, uh, the number of the workers who left Turkey for Germany was 2,700. Uh, but when we came to 1963, uh, this number jumped almost half a million people. Uh, now I would like to introduce you uh, the ordinary uh, Turkish worker. Uh, let me show you. This is a Turkish um, movie called Gurbetçi Şaban, uh, the, the, the guest worker Şaban. Uh, please look at him, uh, how he looks to his surroundings. By the way, this is our guy, Shaban. This is the alienation. He's also known as the Jerry Lewis Turkish movie. Okay, you got the message, right? So these people were tagged as Gaster Arbeiter. Uh, Gaster Arbeiter, uh, which means the, uh, the guest workers. Uh, many different uh, German companies like Siemens and Volkswagen and others began to recruit these Turkish uh, workers. Uh, from Turkey and they began to be brought by trains and by planes and um, later in 1972 uh, Germany began to experience the, the economic uh, recession and then because of this uh, 1973 the oil crisis uh, Germany stopped uh, recruiting uh, new workers in this period we saw that many Turkish workers the relatives of those who were living in now in Germany they came to Germany as tourists. And later, in 1975, uh, the German government came to a conclusion that these people who were brought from uh, Turkey are not only machines, but they are human beings. And as a result, they were permitted to bring their families from Turkey. So uh, beginning with 1975, uh, we see the family reunification. And in this regard, we began to see that the German government began to pay money for each Turkish child that the, uh, the, that the family had. In this um, period, we have witnessed an increase of almost 128% uh, of the Turkish population uh, in, uh, in Germany. And you should take into account 40% of the whole German Turkish population was consisted uh, of children. Again, from another... Uh, from another Turkish movie, I brought you um, another scene from here. Again, our Shaban now is going to the ministry, and he wants to receive money for each child that he, uh, he, you know, he brought to the world. So they were astonished because you see how many ch how many children he has. <laughs> Fourteen children. Evel Allah. Ya. Dermanat Hüseyin kimler? Ahso, bırak şimdi Zoyu. Necmi Yıldız, Hüsnüye Yıldız, Ali Yıldız, Eşref Yıldız, Huriye Yıldız, Necmiye Yıldız, Memduh Yıldız. Tamamı on dört tane. Fourteen children. Give me the money. Aman eksik olmasın. Çocuk yapmak kolay değil. Because it's very hard to bring children to the world. 
Anyways, so uh, these people, of course, uh, they began to experience welfare states and they didn't want to go back to Turkey because in their opinion, uh, these people, I mean, their children could get a better education uh, in Europe. In Germany, we witnessed three different types of education system. One uh, that we happen to see in Bavaria region, that uh, since the uh, German uh, local government thought that they are going to back to Turkey, so these, uh, there were some separate classrooms for these uh, people. Uh, so they did not uh, taught any German. Uh, they were taught Turkish history, Turkish language. So uh, they were not integrated into the German society. In Berlin, it was the exact opposite. Uh, they, were t uh, they were forced to learn German and no uh, Turkish education was granted. And in the northern uh, Westphalian region, we saw the synthesis of, uh, of both cases, uh, which means that they also um, got the education in Turkish and also uh, in German. So in a way, for the second generation Turks, there was a bilingual life, uh, we can say. It means that at home they were speaking in Turkish, but outside they began to speak German. Uh, as they say, Türkiye de biz Almanız, Almanya de biz Yabancıyız, which means uh, in Germany we are Turks, but in uh, 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 in Turkey we are Germans, but in Germany we are the outsiders, we are the foreigners. So these people, these uh, young youngsters, um, you know, each year they have their semester and uh, summer holidays, so they are, their parents are bringing them to Turkey, you know, for the holidays. But then they have another culture shock, because when these kids who were raised in Germany are coming to Turkey, they see that they are very much German and they are not Turkish. And for the Turks, these people are German, you know, their behavior codes are like German. So, but in Germany, they are Turks, so they are stuck uh, between the two countries. And another thing, uh, the, uh, the mentality is very different. For example, in Turkey, everything is very flexible. And now, again, I would like to show you another uh, movie, which is called The Polizei, and then you can see how the Turks are suffering from very strict German discipline that they are calling that they are Nazis, right? Look at that. Again, the same actor. Friends. Oh, is it you? It's okay then. Okay? We are Turks. But now look at the German police. Danke, danke. Danke means it, it, it contains many swear words inside, danke, right? So um, the situation of the third generation is far better, of course, their uh, command in the German language is far better. Uh, also, they began to uh, get married with some of the Germans. So uh, we basically can see that uh, their success rate began to rise. Uh, but uh, in most of the cases, since the Turkish-German um, children were sent to the neighborhood schools, which are mostly populated by Arabs and Turks, so they very hardly, uh, again, integrate into the German society, and their um, rate of penetration to universities is also uh, pretty low. Uh, but there is a very interesting figure, for instance, in 1975, while there were only approximately um, 4,000 Turkish, um, Turkish students uh, in the German uh, universities, today 
uh, this number jumped uh, to 55,000 people. And, um, of course, we also happened to see uh, some uh, neo-Nazi attacks against uh, the, uh, the Turkish community in, in Germany, for example, in uh, Solingen, uh, nine Turks were uh, burned uh, to death, uh, approximately uh, 2,285 uh, attacks, xenophobic attacks against Turks uh, took place. As a result, we began to see that the Turks began to uh, organize their own gangs. So, for example, the, in Kreuzberg neighborhood in Berlin, there is a gang, there was a gang called 36 Boys. 36 is the postal code of Kreuzberg. Okay, so they were basically conducting night patrols in the neighborhood so that uh, they could prevent the arson attacks of the uh, neo-Nazis. Another important uh, uh, group was the Osmanen Germania, the, uh, the, Os the Ottomans uh, in Germany. Uh, this uh, movement was banned by the uh, German uh, government in July, in July 2018. Uh, they had very close links uh, with, uh, with the Turkish government. That's another story. In 2005, Germany officially declared that it is a country that it is uh, accepting uh, migration. Uh, but the Germans began to be uh, mixed between integration and assimilation. They hoped that the Turkish population in Germany will become assimil assimilated in the dominant uh, German population, but it did not happen. Instead, the Turks learned the German language. Uh, they, still, uh, they are still going to their mosques. They are behaving like normal, uh, ordinary German citizens. But they are not becoming German, meaning Christian Protestant. And uh, in this regard, I would like to show you that, in, of course, um, in, of, especially in Kreuzberg, for example, in, uh, in Kreuzberg you can see a Turkish ghettos with the street signs uh, everywhere there, are, uh, there is Turkish. Uh, they have this entity called DITIB. DITIB is the branch of the Turkish uh, Directorate of Religious Affairs in Germany. Uh, they have their own mosques. Uh, if, uh, in Germany we, we have approximately 3,000 mosques, 2,000 of them uh, belong to the Turks. So this entity, DITIB, is also uh, uh, taking care of these mosques. Uh, approximately nine, 900 of them uh, belong to DITIB, meaning that the Turkish government has a direct um, penetration into these mosques. Here you see the, uh, the oldest mosque uh, in Germany, the Shehitlik Jami, uh, which was founded in the Ottoman times. And you can see the graveyard next to the uh, a mosque where the Ottoman ambassador of that time was also buried. Uh, last year we uh, brought our students, Tel Aviv University students, to this mosque uh, in the framework of our study tour uh, in Berlin. And, and now let's speak about uh, the Turks today in Germany. Now you're seeing Fatih Akun, who is a well-known uh, movie pro producer. Uh, approximately um, seven, uh, 75,000 uh, Turkish firms uh, are acting in the German market, and it means that they are providing, um, you know, living approximately to 300,000 people. Uh, we have many uh, notables like Fatih Hakan, like Sibel Kekili, another actress, Nazan Echkes, uh, a television uh, figure. Uh, Asli Bayram was Miss Germany. You know, I guess, Mesut Özil. Uh, in July 2018, he quitted uh, the German national team. And I would, like to show, I would like to show you how an ambivalent identity you have as a Turk in Germany. This is a match between the Turkish national team and the German national team. And Mesut Özil happened to, you know, score a goal. And in order not to be declared as a traitor in Turkey, please look at him, how he celebrated his uh, goal.
جول سواها وزين سواها وزين ويابل نفس الكلام سواها وزين ويابل نفس الكلام You got the point. Now let's move to Eurovision. Maybe you remember in 1999 we Israel hosted the Eurovision Song Contest and it was in Jerusalem, not in Tel Aviv, right? And uh, Germany participated to this uh, Eurovision Song Contest with a band called Surprise. Surprise. It was a huge surprise. They came to the third place and look at their song. Festival. Salam, salam, hadi gidelim Kudüs'e hep birlikte. Let's go to Jerusalem together, right? It's in Turkish, German, and English. From uh, their point of view, from their perspective, of course, it was a huge success. As we said, um, their situation is not easy. What I mean, for, for instance, in Germany, uh, they need to choose between the citizenships. Uh, they cannot have this dual citizenship. Uh, in order not to uh, lose them entirely, so the Turkish government also initiated a new uh, practice called the blue card. It's like a green card of the United States that you cannot vote and you don't have to do the military service, but still you can work and live uh, in Turkey. And also, you see here the uh, Cem Özdemir. Cem Özdemir is from the Green Party. Uh, the Turks are also very much active uh, in the German uh, political system. For instance, in 2010, Aygül Özkan uh, became uh, the Minister of Integration of Human and Family and Health. And um, we also have some Turks who came from other countries. The most uh, stunning case is Cemile Yusuf. You may ask why she's uh, writing her surname like this, because she came from Greece. Her parents came from Greece. She had a Greek uh, citizenship, but uh, Greece later uh, annulled her citizenship and her family because they, they did not uh, live, in, live continuously in Greece. So she's also very much active uh, in, uh, in the German politics. Of course, when we are speaking about Germany and Turkish politics, uh, the Turkish government is also very much aware how they can get uh, the support of the, uh, their expats in Europe for the Turkish elections. There is a new law of Turkey, law, new law in Turkey that these people can vote in the national elections, even if they are living in Israel, Germany, United States, Australia, never mind. And in order to get their support, for instance, uh, the Turkish family minister Fatma Kaya came to Holland and she was declared as a persona non grata because uh, the German government of Rutte, they very much frightened that uh, the uh, right-wing Wilders will exploit that for his own favor so that uh, it was a, you know, a very diplomatic uh, tension between the two countries. Also, the Turkish foreign minister Mevlut Cevusoglu wanted to um, uh, carry out an election campaign uh, in Germany, but he was also rejected. So last year we saw that there, there was a very uh, uh, serious friction between uh, Germany, uh, Turkey and Holland. But when we are looking at the ballot boxes, in Germany approximately uh, a million and a half people uh, voted and 59% of these votes went to went to whom? To Erdogan. Only 14% went uh, to the secular party and 15% to the Kurdish party. Again, the same uh, was observed in Holland. 
approximately uh, 250,000 uh, people voted and 69% where the Turkish minister was declared persona non grata was, you know, went to the uh, AKP to Erdogan. Of course, there are challenges. For instance, patriotic Europeans against the Islamization of the West, the Pegida, uh, is a huge headache for the Turks uh, in Germany. This organization was, found, was founded in Dresden in 2014. And uh, from their perspective, uh, uh, the Turks and Islam uh, do not uh, belong to the German and the European culture. Uh, they call people not to eat döner kebab and not to go to Turkey uh, for holidays and uh, not to buy anything uh, from a supermarket where uh, a headscarf lady uh, is working. And uh, I think I'm done. Thank you very much for listening.